In today's Madden 24 video, I'm about to break down the best red zone defense in the game that all the pros use to get stops in the red zone, prevent their opponents from scoring touchdowns, and win games. Let's get into it now. YouTube, what is up? It is your boy Duke, back here from SportsGamers.com. And the red zone is probably the most critical area of the field in Madden 24. A lot of people can move the ball up and down the field, but once they get inside that 10, this is where games are won and lost. And if you can stop your opponent from scoring touchdowns in the red zone, you're going to win 99% of your games. Now, the defense I'm about to show you guys has a few different ways to set it up. It's going to be from the 4-3, even 6-1. You can run this from either the Kansas City Chiefs defensive playbook or the Jets defensive playbook. Those are my favorites that have the 4-3 even 6-1 because they also have like nickel and some dollar stuff as well. Now, as far as your coaching adjustments when running this defense, these are very, very important. You're going to want to have auto flip off with auto alignment on base option defense set to conservative. Now, these zone drops are the most important thing. I like turning the match off, setting zone coverage to default. Your flats, you're going to want to keep on default because you want the ability to either play a hard flat or a cloud flat. Your curl flats are going to want to set on 20. And I know you might be wondering, Duke, why, why set them on 20 if we're inside the 10? We're going to mostly focus on when the offense is between the 5 to 10 yard line because this is where things really get difficult or are very at the most important, right? Because at this area of the field, um, the passing concepts change and you can't just easily run the ball in, right? Well, when you put your curl flats on 20, you can use these to defend the corners of the end zone that are really, 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 really hard to defend that people like to abuse. Then you want to put your hook zones at either a 5 or 10. Now, depending upon what literally literal lot Now, depending upon what literal yard line the offense is on depends upon if you put them on 5 or 10. Basically, you want the hook zones a couple yard like one or two yards into the end zone. So if your opponent's at like the 7 or the 8, I would put it on 10. If they're at like the 4 to 5, I would probably just keep it on 5. If they're at like the 12, I'd probably put them on 15. You catch my drift? So that's pretty much that. Now, as far as anything else goes, I mean, just make sure you have Lurk Artist linebackers. I do find this important. Lurk Artist DNs is cool too, in case you want a user or DN. Uh, but mostly just Lurk Artist linebackers. And I like to have mid zone KO on all of my DBs, uh, the safeties in the corners. Uh, I have deep zone KO too, but you know, that's not going to be as important in this area of the field. And the play we're going to look at is the cover for quarters guys cover four quarters now guys i'm gonna show you a few different ways to set this up a blitz and a coverage defense so make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video otherwise you're gonna miss out on important info to win more games if you want more high level Madden 24 content i do daily videos on my channel new gameplays and tips and news so make sure you subscribe drop me a like comment on the video let's get it i do appreciate the support so the first thing i want to show you guys is how to blitz and still play lockdown coverage in this area of the field. Now, the reason why I like using 4-3 even is it has the best run D blitz coverage combo for this area of the field. The first thing is that you can't let them run the ball. Well, this defense is going to lock up any run. The second thing is, is you need to have a good coverage blitz combo. This defense does that. So if I want to blitz, what I'm going to do is blitz all my linebackers. And to do that, I hit right on the D-pad and then I hit down on the right stick. It's going to just blitz them all. Now, obviously, I need to change my coverage up. And what I like to do is put both of my corners in hard flats and then both of my safeties in hook zones. Now, the hard flats are very important because against this type of defense, someone's probably just going to try to quick chuck into the flat, maybe even throw an RPO. And having a hard flat will stop all that, but more importantly, having them backed up, the corners backed up and not pressed, almost baits them into thinking that they can throw that quick flat or that RPO where they really can't. Then having these safeties and hook zones, they're going to basically just be chilling right here um, at the front of the end zone. And if they're tall, I, I like dudes that are at least 6'1", 6'2", but 6'3", 6'4", and higher is even better. Especially if they have uh, a pick artist, lurk artist, mid zone KO, man. They're going to go crazy. And what you do is you just basically stand up. You can stand up behind the deep tackle and from the center. But the most important thing with your user is to make sure that you got those three horizontal like green lines above your head. That means the O-line's targeting you. Now, first of all, if they try to throw a screen pass on you, um, you know, an RPO or whatever, you can shoot these very easily with your user if they try to hand the ball off. As you guys can see, I literally just shoot right through the gap. Um, but, you know, I guess 
Bo Jackson saw that I was shooting through the gap, so he stopped even trying to run. But you guys can see, like, the A gap literally opens up wide. So you can just shoot through the gap. I mean, in, in, in the game, this is a tackle for a loss every single time. Because obviously, in a game, the, the human's not just going to stop there and stand there and wait for someone else to tackle him. But, you know, in, in the event, you guys can see that, you know, this is a lockdown run D. Because you just shoot the gap, it's, it's, it's GG's. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, well, you know, what if they actually throw the RPO? And, I mean, that's valid. But the thing is, is, like, <laughs> if you throw the RPO, you're going to get tackled for a loss if not picked off do you want to become a better madden player and win more games if so check out my premium madden strategy website sportsgamers.com i have built sportsgamers.com to provide you with the best madden tips best madden ebooks and schemes all from the pros at the lowest price possible i have helped thousands upon thousands of madden players improve their games and i can help you as well our vip madden membership is our best offer yet this membership will include all of our Madden ebooks all year long and hundreds of weekly Madden Vault tip updates to keep you ahead of the game. Click the link in the description and use coupon code DUKE for 10% off your order. Uh, immediately by that hard flat. Look, see how that hard flat crashes down? I mean, good luck with that. Now you're probably saying to yourself, well, what if they pass the ball? Like, what if they just literally just throw an actual pass? Well, again... The same coverage is going to lock that up. And, you know, if you have one uh, side of the field that you're not really worried about an actual quick flash, excuse me, quick flat throw, you can do a cloud flat or you could even do a soft squat. But if you're worried about the actual flats, hard flats are better. Like in this situation, you know, I probably would be more worried about a quick flat pass on the right because that's where the three receivers, one running back is. There's only one receiver over there on the left, so I'm not really – has worried about that as much but you guys can see here if they just try to throw a real real quick pass i mean there's nothing open like you're getting sacked immediately or you're throwing a pick because i got the flats and the hook zones just waiting for the quick passes i'm lurking over the middle and as you guys can see there's just people f screaming free i mean you at this point you're getting sacked and if you do try to throw the ball here you're chucking a pick i mean you're chucking a pick man it's it's not gonna be open so that's the first setup which is going to defend, you know, the run, the quick flats, the pass. It gets you really good pressure. You know, what if, you know, you're actually worried about them, you know, throwing the ball, you blitz once or twice, and you want to, you know, you want to mix in some actual coverage defense. Well, you can play really good coverage defense from this t defense as well um, with, with not blitzing. Now, I still like the hard flats on the corners, but if I'm not blitzing, what I normally do is, I'll normally put the um, safeties in purples so that they can defend the corner of the end zone and then the uh, basically the linebackers and hooks. Now, if you're playing this type of defense, you can still use her, this guy right here over the middle, um, or you could use her one of your lurk artist DNs. Now, if they have identifier on their O-line or just anywhere on their offense, they can see your user. So if you know they have identifier, I probably wouldn't do this because a smart player would see you on a DN and be like, oh, he's probably playing coverage, right? So don't do that if they have identifier, but if they don't have identifier, I would definitely do this because it's another just nice change of change up you can do to give yourself another guy in coverage. As you guys can see here, I'm able to just add myself in coverage. And again, there's really, it's really not anything open. You know, this defense, again, like this defense is nice, uh, but I would only, only play on that the end if you know for a fact they don't have identifier. Because if they do have identifier, you're better off just using this linebacker. Um, it's, you know, this defense is good coverage, uh, whether you use it the linebacker or the end. So one more example to show you guys how the coverage looks on this. If you're using the linebacker again, kind of sitting over that middle of the field area. And again, I mean, it's a four man rush. Everything's caged. So let me show you guys the replay here. Um, again, this is why you want lurk artist linebackers. So it, when they are in the hook zone, they're able to just, you know, get good animations, jump up there. Really important. But you guys can see, look, the flats are guarded, and then also the corner of the end zone is guarded by the safety and the curl flat. That's very important. Same thing over here, and then we got the hook zones just basically chilling. Again, remember, your job would be to guard the middle of the field, literal middle of the field in this situation. So, like, anything seam pass, post, crosser in that middle of the field, that's on you. Remember, that's on you. Now, if you're on the D end, then you can free roll more, but if you're on the linebacker, you got to stay disciplined. Another thing you could do is you could go ahead and put your linebackers in the leave them in the curl flats and your safeties in the hook zones and then you could pinch these guys and by pinching them then they're going to be able to get out faster to guard the corner of the end zone but again if you pinch them realize that a smart offensive player probably is going to realize that when you're pinching them 
you know, you, you know, you're not blitzing. So again, it's a, it's it's a take, give and take here. You can get better positioning if you pitch your linebackers for coverage, but then you're going to give away the fact you're probably not blitzing. This defense is really, really, really hard to score in, in the red zone. The really only thing you got to be on the lookout for is probably like quick seam passes, whether it's a running back out of the backfield, tied in on verticals, or that like slot receiver look on like trips verticals. Those are the, the main things that can get you. So if I see someone run something like that, that's going to be what I jump with my user. Also, if you want to, you could man that up with the safety too if you really feel like that's coming. So there are a little bit more adjustments you can do, but this is the base way to run it. Hope this helps you guys out. Win more games. Until next time, it's your boy Duke, and I'm out of here.